Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this one I'm going to explain to you exactly what the ref keyword does in C Sharp, both in the context of a parameter passing, but also how it can be used with struct to change how struct can be used in your code, especially around allocations. Now, a prerequisite for this video, you have to fully understand what a reference type and a value type is and how it works. And if you don't, I actually do have a video explaining the subject in both what it is and how it is allocated exactly. So I highly recommend you check that video first before you see this one. This video will mostly focus on parameter passing, mainly because that's probably what you must have seen uh, most in your code or other people's code. However, ref is now heavily used with structs, so I'm gonna touch on that as well because we're optimizing memory in some places and ref can actually give you some guarantees in the context of a struct. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you're subscribing to the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So what do I have here? Well, let's open the program.cs and I have a normal program.cs with a static void main here, um, nothing in it yet. And then I have these two things. I have a string example method, which has a bunch of code in it, and then a string holder class, which has a single property called value, normal getter setter, and nothing else. And now this string example method will create a new uh, instance of that string holder and then append the word world in here. So if I show you what it does in action, we're going to execute that real quick. As you can see, it prints hello world because I'm writing hello and I'm appending world here. And by the way, this is a nested function. So that's very straightforward. Now let's change this a little bit. As you might know, structs are used a lot in C-sharp, especially when they make sense in the context of your code, but also if you want to save some allocations um, and they do uh, make sense to use at that point, then you might want to use them. Now, if I change that to a struct, let's see what happens to the behavior of the code above. I, I just changed this to a struct, nothing else. And the code is still the same. Now, if I call this, if I just run this, what do you think the printed thing will be? And if you want to pause the video now, write it down, maybe in a comment or on a piece of paper or something. And let's see if it is what you expected. So I'm going to run this. And as you can see, what I get back is hello. It looks like the world bit, this method invocation, is completely ignored. Interesting. Now, if I change that back to a class, let's see something else. I can comment this out and I can say str equals new string holder. And let's just say, um, I don't know, value equals goodbye uh, world. I don't know, something like that. What do you think will happen if I execute this? Now, Writer does give you some hints here, so I don't cheat. But what do you think will happen? This now is a class and we're setting this value. If I run this, you still see hello. The whole thing is ignored. So those are the three behaviors that probably concern you and I want to talk about mainly because there's so much misconception around them. So by default, and let me just change this, let me just comment this out. So by default, every variable that you pass into a method is passed by value. So it's a value parameter. Now, what does that mean? It means that the value of the variable is being uh, put in a new location here in the method declaration and then used into the method. And now you might say, okay, but then if I do this and I append the world, how is this reflected in the method? Well, it is reflected because remember, the value of a reference type is the reference itself. And since this variable and this variable point to the same reference, any manipulation to the properties or the internals of that reference type will be reflected in both places. Same way that if this variable is manipulated in a separate thread, let's say, it will be reflected here as well. So we are in this situation. However, since this is passed down by value, if you set that to a new object, then sure, this str will be updated, but then the reference is no longer pointing at that thing that was passed down. It is now pointing at this new string holder object. And that's the main difference. That's why this is happening. Now, if you wanted to do that, this is where the ref keyword comes in. So you simply put ref in front of this uh, class here, and then you also have to put it 
as you're calling it. And you have to explicitly specify it in both method declaration and method invocation. And now if I run this, look what happens. It now says goodbye world, because now we're not putting the value that we're passing down into this location, we're just passing down the reference itself. It's that simple. Now let's take a look at how this works with a struct, for example. And just so you can actually grab this code if you become a Patreon, I'm not going to change that. I'm going to use this down here, which is an int holder, where we create a new int holder, which is a struct, and then we set the value to something, and then we change it here, and then we run this through. And this follows the same uh, pattern by default. So if I go up here and I comment this out, and I call the int example method, like we said before, this is a struct, which is a value type, not a reference type, not a class. This is important. Again, if you don't know the difference, watch that video that I talked about in the beginning of the video. And if I run this, what do you think will happen? You can pause the video right now. But we start with 69 and we call this method. This is a value type. This is a struct. We run this. The value change was ignored. Why? Well, when you're passing by value on a value type, you're passing down the value itself because there's no pointer to that value. You just store the value. So any change here will only be reflected to that int holder. And just so you understand exactly, let me just debug this. So as you can see, this int holder is here and it has this as 69 that we pass down and then value parameter passing so the value of a value type is the value itself and then as you're setting this here this is 420 but this which is a struct is not this which is still a struct and once we go outside of the context this is basically uh, popped out of the stack and it no longer exists so that's why you see 69 here now if i set ref here and here so ref on a struct what do you expect will happen uh, i have time okay so if i run this now it says 420 because now we're passing down the reference to the value type now you might have noticed that passing a value type by reference which is basically this or a reference type by value, which is the default thing that we had before where there's no ref here, um, behaves the same, but actually doesn't because this, yes, it will change the value here, but this will also allow you to do this. Int equals new int holder, and then you have some random value done now, something like this. And now, if I comment this out, this will actually set the thing so this is not something you can do if you were to pass a reference type by value you would just ignore this so it doesn't quite work the same and you have to understand this the last thing i want to touch upon on this video is how you can have the ref keyword on a struct so let's say that this in holder now has ref in front of it here what does that do well a ref struct is basically an instruction that tells you that this thing can only be allocated on the stack. And how can this happen? Well, by only being allowed to be created in very specific places. For example, now that I change this, if I go on the top of the class and I say something like private read only um, int holder, let's say, int holder, then I can't do that because class members like this can't be allocated on the heap and if i was to use it like this then even though it is a value type being a class member it would be allocated on the heap alongside each parent which is the class program so and you can see that if i remove this it works fine because even though it is a struct it is a value type allocated normally on the stack in this context it has to be allocated on the heap with its parent and if i add the ref keyword in front of it now it can no longer be used in that context because we can't guarantee that it will be allocated on the stack. And that's it. Hello everybody. As I was reviewing the video, I saw that I missed a couple of use cases. So I'm retroactively now updating it to have those use cases in. Sorry for the continuity. Let's just go back to the ref keyword. So let's go with the first example. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a private, um, let's say int array called numbers. 
and we're just going to initialize this to have a couple of numbers here. So let's say these two. And then let's create a method called a public static. And let's say int get number in position. And let's accept an array. So sum int array here and use a position, which is the index and return that item. Now, why wouldn't you directly access the array? Well, you would, but what I'm trying to say here, and actually let me just do this, is that what if you had this scenario and this array was coming from somewhere else? So what you have is you say var value equals get number in position, and then you pass down the array numbers. And in fact, this doesn't even need to be here. I can even define this in the method. So here, and then position is one. And then we can say right line number is, and then we print the value. So if I do that, if I just execute it to see what it does, as you would expect, it will print for 20. So great. Now let's take a look at the following. If let's say I get the value and then I set the value to um, 10 and then I print it, what do you expect? Well, what you expect is for that value to be 10 because I set it to 10 and I returned it. This in return means that if I was to debug this piece of code, as I am setting this value to 10, the array that the value was originally taken from still stays 420 because it's a value type, it's being copied, we don't really affect that value. It's no longer a reference to that item. However, it could be. You can do that by combining two techniques. First, you want to add the ref keyword on the signature and you want to return ref. So you're returning a reference. And why is that important? Well, an integer is a value type. So basically you lose where this integer originally came from. So if you want it, you can use that. And now if I execute this and I skip over that, and I go to numbers, this is still 420, nothing changed. So what you want to do now, if you want the value to be affected, is you add ref on the method call, and then you add the ref local here. So ref var value equals ref of that method. And then you have the ref here. If I remove the ref from here, this is no longer something that can be triggered. So it needs to be explicitly here as well. And now if I return that and I debug the code, as you can see, have numbers so 69 and 420 i step over that i get the value it's 420 i set the value to 10 which means that now the array has 69 and 10 instead of 69 and 420 because now i have a reference to that entry in the array to that value and it will change the actual reference itself not just the value and then i step over that and i print 10. so this is another thing you can do nowadays with the ref keyword it does mean you have to use it basically all the way. So return ref, ref in the method signature, ref when you actually call the method and ref on the variable. But once you do that, you can do many, many things. And one other thing is that you can actually turn this into a ref read only var, which makes that immutable then and won't allow you to actually change. So that's another thing that you can do. Back to the old Nick. That's all I had for you for this video. I hope you understood the concept and thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.